On Radio Row at the NFL Combine in Indianapolis, that is Tom Pelissero, NFL Network, uh, of course, the Hoffman Show here on the Team 980, always live as well on the free Odyssey app. Uh, Tom, eyes on Washington uh, in this draft. Uh, any any uh, rumors, Any any anything? Like, as you guys talk about this draft and, like, the insiders on NFL Network, et cetera, like, how much of it is Chicago? How much of it is Washington? Like, who, who, do, who does the league see as, like, the team in control of this draft? Well, it's Chicago because they, they own the number one pick because Ryan Poles has shown that he's willing to be aggressive and make moves. He, you know, he traded out of number one last year. They, I believe that the Bears have a pretty good idea internally what direction they want to go. And there are a lot of reasons to believe that that would be drafting Caleb Williams and ultimately trading Justin Fields. You think about it from who they hired as the offensive coordinator in Shane Waldron. It's probably a pretty similar offensive philosophy to what you had with Luke Getze. With Caleb Williams, this is probably the style of offense that he would be best suited in, whereas Justin Fields may not be as well suited uh, to that style of offense. You look at just the resource management. If you keep Justin Fields as your starter in year four, now you're basically in a position where you need to pay him. Plus, at this point, you've already spent two months dancing with other girls here, and you're now going right. to go back to him would be a little bit rough. But also, you reset your cap. You reset your resource allocation when you draft a guy on a rookie contract who you're going to have at a low number for several years. Having said that, the Bears have never met Caleb Williams, not you know the top guys. The area scouts may have come across him at various points and whatnot, but like for Kevin Poles Warren and, and yeah. Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus and Shane Waldron, the 15-minute interview that I believe they had last night was like the first time that they really got a chance to get to know a guy who is doing this entire pre-draft process differently. He's... He's the first, what I would call the NIL babies, the guys who are multimillionaires in college. They've basically been professional athletes already for several years. They're used to doing deals. They have brands. They have business sense. And I think generationally, there's something about young people, you know, how old are you? I'm 34. Okay, I'm 42, I think. Yeah, yeah 42. I'm, I'm definitely 34, I think. My birthday was like last week, and I was like, wait, what number was that? Right, so you're closer yeah. to me than you are to them. Yes. I know, like, I've got nine- and seven-year-old kids, and the way that their brains work is just different about everything. And I think that naturally, again, generationally it's part of it, but also when you've been a professional athlete before, you're asked why a lot. You know, Caleb Williams' dad, Carl, has been a long time like disruptor as an entrepreneur and a business person. He was guiding Caleb through a lot of his you know young days and, and coming up through the quarterback camps and whatnot. And so Caleb is just you know I think that the way that they're looking at it. And Caleb hasn't talked you know here that'll be tomorrow at the podium. I'm hoping to get a chance to catch up with him as well. But it seems like the philosophy toward, for instance, not doing the medical, which no long time NFL scout remembers anybody right. skipping not, out, not, not including the one, COVID year. Not working out is one thing. Medical. Right. Quarterbacks yeah. every year, it's it's hit and miss with the first round guys. They might throw, they might not. But everybody does the medical. From Kayla's perspective, it's, well, it's either the Bears or one of a couple of teams that would trade up with the Bears. Why am I going to give my private medical data to all 32 teams? Some of the old school scouts and executives I talked to, when I told them, because I found this out like a week or so ago, when I told them Caleb's not doing the medical, I got responses like, well, what's he hiding? And I don't think he's hiding anything. But it makes them question it. Right. There's a long-time scouting phrase, which is it's easier to explain a bad score than an empty box. In other words, if you're a wide receiver and you run 4-6 and you were supposed to run 4-5, you can say, well, you know, his hamstrings were tight, it was a slow track, he wasn't training for it, he was sick. An empty box is, well, why is it an empty box? Is he slow? We don't know. You're leaving more of the unknowns. He also doesn't have an agent. So he, he doesn't really have football background people around him. Um, you know, he's got Judy Smith, who he's worked with for a long time, who's like a D.C. crisis communications person instead of a traditional publicist. It's just there's a lot of different things. And so you want to spend time around him. The commanders also interviewed him. The Patriots interviewed him. You know, then you go down the list of some of those teams. Maybe it could be the trade-up teams, the Giants, the Vikings, the Raiders. The Jets interviewed him as well, probably just to gather information for, you know, down the line if somehow uh, he became available. All of which is a, a long way of answering the question, which I don't even remember at this point. But basically, you know, the Bears are in control of the yeah. draft here. But it makes sense for them to gather all the data points that they can, explore everything, have conversations with other teams. Is there an offer out there that could completely knock their socks off and they would 
be willing to consider it for the number one pick. I think, again, another reason that it's hard to believe they move off it is you have a GM and a head coach in year three. Usually the three, the year three guys are either going to get extended or get fired. And that's, I don't mean to be crass about it, but like that's just sure. the reality of the NFL. You enter year three, a lot of times it's a make or break type year. If you don't draft the quarterback, if you go back in with Justin Fields again, you're not buying yourself additional time like you would with a rookie quarterback. Can the commanders come up with the type of an offer that could allow them to get to number one? I would anticipate they at least try, that they at least have the conversation. So you, you would, I mean, it's one thing to have the conversation internally. It's another thing to call Chicago and be like, hey, but with the, the way the Peters. You? Why not? I think that if you're Peters and you have a long term vision of building through the draft, then like obviously more draft capital is, is what you want. Then again, if you think Caleb is that guy, there's right. there's no price you wouldn't pay. Right, or just explore it. It's not you sure. know, it's not like your fantasy league where like you, you set it and you pick a couple guys, you say, here, here's the offer. It's more so like, hey, all right. Like, what would it take? Like, yeah. what, what are we talking about? Until you call it into the league, you can always pull it back. Exactly. Like, you're Fair just, you're, you yeah. know, it's not even like a negotiation. It's a, right. Initially, it's a conversation. Right. Negotiation is a different thing where you're actually exchanging proposals. I would anticipate a lot of teams at least are pulling Ryan aside, being like, all right, what are the odds? Can, we, right. can, we, can you move? Right. Would What's you move? The price? What would it be? What would right. it take? And Ryan probably doesn't give him a direct answer. You right. know, eventually you want to make your offer. Um, I, again, I think it's hard to believe that they move off that pick, but. There's a lot of things that are hard to believe that happen in the NFL every year, so never say never. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, Tom Pelissero, NFL Network Insider, with us here on the Hoffman Show. Um, I'm going to try to ask you this question in a way that you can answer it easily, um, but the commanders for years have been a very leaky organization. Um, you are you're like, yeah, you could say that. Um, various various regimes worth of leaky leakiness. Uh, with this new regime now and obviously it is not very old like how is the kind of as an insider the information gathering about this team you think of the coach hiring process the gm hiring process how is it different than maybe covering them as a national insider in years past i I mean i don't think that you know the information flow thing i know it's like a common question and it is interesting i think our, our fans care about it a lot so with everybody i think um every team does things differently and you just figure out how every organization is going to operate. And then you, you base it off that. There's some right. organizations that are going to be helpful. There's some that are absolutely not going to be helpful. And you find different ways to, to get at things. I mean, there's certainly, careful about how I choose these words, there's certainly some coordination in terms of certain information goes to certain people. Mm-hmm. And you can see that. And Josh Harris's name is very front and center a lot. Bob Meyer's name is very front and center a lot. You probably hear more about Josh Harris and what he's doing than what Adam Peters is doing right now, which I find interesting. I think that part of that is combating the Dan Snyder hangover and everybody just wanting to see at all turns that you've got a guy who's not on his yacht during the pre-draft process, that he's actually here in Indianapolis going through it. There's also the fine line between is Josh Harris going to be in every meeting forever? Is right. he going to be like some of the owners that want to have a, a meeting the day after the game and talk at length when the coaches just want to move on and game plan? And I don't know the answer to that question. But right now, these are obviously massive organizational decisions. When you're drafting a quarterback potentially at number two or trying to get up to number one, Josh Harris is going to have to sign off on that as well. So it does make sense for him to be part of the information gathering process. But him being in quarterback interviews and stuff, I think it's fair to say that that's a, um, that is an exception to the rule. Interesting. All right, last thing for you, real quick, because I know you got a million of these and you got to run. Uh, but you mentioned uh, in in our first discussion about Caleb, the agent side of this, and, and kind of the who works out, who doesn't, who does medicals, who doesn't, and that empty box theory. Um, one of the things that I've talked about with some folks this week in terms of the agent side of it is that they don't want their guys doing anything that could hurt them. Are you seeing a, a conflict there between teams that don't want that empty box and agents that go like, hey, my guy's hamstring's tight. I'm just not going to run him because that's going to hurt his stock. Well, I mean, again, if you don't run, if you never run, the assumption that a lot of people are going to make, they're going to compare it to the tape, obviously, but they're going to go, I bet he's not as fast. He's not, not going to time well. He might be a faster play speed, but that number's going to drag him down. It's exactly that. That's why you know 98% of these guys do everything. Right. You know, they really do. Like unless you have an injury, like a legit injury, most of the guys go out there and, and participate in everything. 
for you know quarterbacks in particular, more and more of the quarterbacks, for instance, are not running the 40 now because right. they don't want to end up looking like Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes <laughs> tweeted last night about like, hey, please, NFL Network, stop using the Patrick Mahomes 40-yard dash overlay. You know, when they do like the comparisons yeah. of like this year's quarterback. I'm tired of racing Rich Eisen. Right, exactly. Like, don't, <laughs> don't keep using me. Right. Like, you know. Pat wasn't gonna. He wasn't gonna blow it away, but he decided to do it. Lamar never ran a forty. Um, I don't know that Stroud ever ran a forty. Plenty of guys yeah. like just don't don't do it. And some of that's driven by what the agents decide to do. Some of it's driven by the players themselves. Most guys come and compete, but you've also got you know Marvin Harrison Jr. is not going to do anything here. Three of the top quarterbacks are not throwing here. This is might be a generational thing. It also might just be a reflection of you know, what do they do in other sports? Top NBA draft picks don't work out. No. They don't do the medical. If you're guaranteed to be a top three pick, you just don't do any of it. Right. Why? Because nothing you can do is going right. to really help you at this point because you're going to get drafted up there. But, I'd rather have you think right. I might run a 4-6 than I actually ran the 4-6. Right. I mean, think of it as... Uh, I, mean, I personally would love to run a 4-6, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> think of it as like one half of a bell curve, right? Right. There's... Bell curve, for people who don't know, is like this. Right. So if you take half of it, here's the players that are guaranteed to be top five picks. It's like a right. couple of guys. Right. Then the guaranteed first round is a little bigger. Then everybody else is like clumped in here where they could rise or they could fall. Everybody's going to try to rise. If you think you're going to be a third-round pick, you don't not do stuff out here. You come out. Show that you're willing to compete, and maybe you can help yourself through the process. No doubt. All right, Tom Pelissero, uh, the Insiders, and much more on NFL Network. He's all over all of their coverage all weekend long here in Indianapolis. Tom, thank you so much, sir, sir and hopefully we'll be talking uh, as we get closer to the draft and more wacky stuff happens. Absolutely, man. You got it. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.